diving right in, this is it. This is the food production system. Uh, you can see the general layout. We've got food production modules, an area for long-term food storage and inedible food waste storage, and then uh, a service hall kind of connecting all the modules together. We've got five modules for fault tolerance and a large window to collect solar energy for plant photosynthesis. And uh, each one of these modules uh, provides 290 square meters of growable area. A total of 1,450 meters squared just to feed nine people. At a high level, we've attempted to lay out a solid engineering foundation for the entire Mars Settlement Program with all the future work identified that is necessary for a larger team to turn this into reality. We've got an accurate MATLAB model of the solar input as a function of Mars latitude, ground albedo, dust condition, the surface angle of the window, and time. And then uh, we've also created a, a detailed thermal model to predict the internal temperatures and the resulting heating and cooling power that you need to stay within the temperature requirements. We've got First, the crew requirements, so how much protein, fat, carbohydrates, fats does a human need to survive? When you're growing these crops, there's a lot of variables that you need to control. Um, you've got the nutrient solution and the formulation, the concentration, the pH, temperature, aeration of that nutrient solution, light intensity, light cycle, pressure. How could this be a solution to our food supply problems on Earth? Well. Producing agriculture on Earth in the same way you would do on Mars can provide a significant competitive advantage over traditional farming. Get over 90% reduction in water consumption. The only water you use is whatever's taken up in the mass generation of the plant, and that gets removed from the food production module and eaten. But other than that, all of the other water can be recycled. And we get increased crop yields per unit time and area. You're removing the dependence of agriculture on the climate and the natural environment. There are all these other companies already uh, creating this indoor farming and it's it's an old tradition like for example in the Netherlands like they know very well how to uh, grow crops and so what is the innovation that you would have um, otherwise built today to improve that? Traditionally most of the crops that have been kind of adopted by hydroponics tend to be like lettuce, tomatoes, kind of those like single season crops. I don't think hydroponics and these like closed environment agriculture systems have really adopted some of the more difficult crops to grow or perennial crops, like things that take many years or say you want to grow an apple tree or something like that. I have a feeling that you'll need to expand much further beyond the current base of crops that are grown hydroponically if you're going to do this on Mars. For example, like wheat and rice, those typically aren't grown hydroponically because, well, you can just throw that in the dirt and <laughs> it just sprouts up. Each crop has its own ideal growing condition. You'll need to go through experimentally determine all these for all these crops that you want on Mars, but haven't yet really been um, adopted by hydroponics here on Earth. In addition to that, the amount of engineering that goes into developing a system on Mars, what is the environment on Mars, and how does the structure and the systems look like in order to grow these crops? And you can't just like move the Earth hydroponics systems just to Mars and just expect them to work. There's so much other stuff that goes into making that environment conducive for plant growth. They don't need to worry about maintaining pressure. It's, well, we're in nice one atmosphere pressure here. <laughs> on Earth, you're worried about cooling the system rather than on Mars, you're trying to keep it warm because everything's much colder. So. so if you look at like some of the proposals, like SpaceX is gonna put their starship there and, and, and bring people, um, I have a feeling on those very first missions, there's going to be a, a heavy emphasis on bringing your own food. It, it'll take some time before you see humans growing their own food. But I like where Mars City Design is coming from because um, you're starting small. Like the first time you grow food, there's not going to be this large base of like 100 people there. 
you're just going to have this really small crew, like nine people. You won't have the manpower to have lots of process intensive stuff. You're not going to be like having a, um, like a, a yeast factory to make leavened bread. You, you, there's so much processing steps that you have to skip out when you have a very small crew. <laughs> so. The first winner of the Mars City Design Urban Farming Challenge in the category of engineering for 2020 is Justin's Mars Farm by Justin Perkeva. Congratulations, Justin. Congratulations, Justin Perkeva. That's cool. <laughs> Thank you. This is like the first time I've ever won anything. So <laughs> I'm an engineer at a space company up here in Seattle. I'm, I'm glad that you guys put this together and gave me like some structure to like actually put all my ideas into uh, a legit like presentation. So um, I was very happy to join in the competition and uh, I'm very happy that you guys put this on. So I think uh, um, it's, it's good when you get all these like people that are very passionate all together and you um, can end up creating some pretty cool stuff. So uh, thank you. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you guys at Mar City Design that organized this design challenge. Um, I had a lot of fun. And it'd be awesome to expand on this work, kind of collaborate with you guys in the future on this, this future, this new manifest destiny to kind of settle the right planet. So thank you, and uh, signing off.